Hi everyone. I'm going to teach you how to make a baby mandrake or mandragora of your very own. Just like those you saw in the Harry Potter movies. It's easy to do and best of all, cost almost nothing. So let's get started. Here are the materials you need to get together. You should be able to find most of this stuff around the house. I found this old terracotta flower pot at a garage sale. I will use it as the base. It only cost 50 cents. Most any kind of pot will do. The older and more aged looking, the better. We will use some all-purpose flour to make our paper mache. I picked some roots from my backyard. These came from weeds. You're looking for thin little roots that branch out all over. I bought these artificial grapes at a thrift store. They were like 25 cents. Some water. I'm using cheap acrylic paints and some craft brushes. We will need some super glue. Two black glass bead tokens will be the eyes. You can find these at the craft store and game shops sometimes have them. Some straight pins. A few leaves cut from an artificial plant I also bought at a thrift shop. Some masking tape. And we'll need newspaper. You can find this list of materials in the description below. We are going to make our mandrake's basic shape first. The best way to get started is to just get started. Take a few pieces of newspaper and ball them up. Please understand that you don't have to follow this shape exactly. All mandrakes are unique. Use the masking tape to hold the shape in place. Just keep building until you have a nice torso shape. I will speed up the video, but hopefully you can follow along. There are no wrong answers here. Just do what feels right and have fun. Once you have the torso, it's time to add on some branches on the top of his head. Just twist the paper to get the shape. Attach them to the torso with tape. I decided to make three for the top. There we go. Now I will make his root arms. The arms are a bit skinnier than his branches on top. At the end of each arm, I split the paper to make several fingers. Twisting and taping will hold them in place. You'll just repeat the same technique to build the second arm. Okay, now we will add a few legs. These are similar to the top branches in size. I decided to give him three legs. I'm using the flower pot as a reference to make sure his arms are long enough to hang in place over the edge. The arms stick over the pot to support him. Looks good. So now we have our base form. 
Again, yours may look different, and that's great. Now I'm going to mix up some paper mache, which is a little messy, but a lot of fun. I like to use an old cereal box as a work surface. I just open up the seams and lay it flat. It's free and it's nice to find a second use for things. To make the paper mache, I take a scoop or two of the flour and add some water. Mix until it is a thin consistency. Get out all the lumps. It does get a little thicker over time as the flour absorbs the water. Once you have the paper mache mixed, tear the newspaper into thin strips. You'll need a good supply. Now we are ready to start applying the strips to our mandrake. Take a few and dip them into the mixture so they get nice and wet. Then wipe off the excess with your fingers. Place a strip onto his body and smooth it down. Keep adding strips until you have covered the entire figure. I'm going to speed things up again. You can put as many layers of paper mache as you would like, but I got away with only one. The more layers you add, the stronger he will be. Be sure to cover the entire base, including his arms and fingers, so that he will be nice and somewhat smooth for painting. Okay, he is all covered now and very wet. He's soggy, so be very gentle and careful not to rip anything. Let's test him out in his pot. I put a few wads of paper in the bottom of the pot for support. Put him in place so his arms look good before he starts to dry, because once he's dry, you can't move them. I taped his arms in place, just for added support. Now he needs to dry overnight. After seeing him dry, I decided to add height to his top stems so when I add the big leaves, his face won't be completely hidden. I just used the same process as before. First, I made the base shape with dry paper and taped it in place. Then I added my paper mache strips, smoothing them down. I gathered the three top stems together to make a strong base for his leaves. I taped them and covered the tape with more paper mache strips. Now another night of drying. Okay, now that he's dry, we can start making his adorable face. Take the black glass bead eyes and use some super glue to glue them into place. The straight pins will help me hold the wet paper in place while I form the face. I started by giving him a brow. Don't worry, you can't make a mistake. Every mandrake face is different. Yours will find his own personality. Just build up strips above and below the eyes and use the pins to hold them in place.
I rolled some small balls of paper to form his nose. My mandrake has a frowny, unhappy face. I made his lips using the same process of placing several strips until I was happy with his look. I used quite a few strips to build up his facial contours. The first ones are just to get the structure of the face so that it has definition. Then I place more strips on top to smooth down the surface. His glass eyes will get a little dirty, but they can be cleaned later with water. It's drying time again. Leave the pins in so he dries correctly. Now it's time to paint him. I'm going to give him a base coat of orange. Oops, the straight pins can come out now. Okay, now I can cover him all over. Once that dried, I made a thinner dark brown wash by adding water to the paint. I'll dab that on to give him a natural root color. I added a little black paint to darken down my brown wash. I dabbed some paint off with a napkin as I went. The messier, the better. I wanted the stems to be a slightly different color since they're supposed to be above ground. So I added some red paint to my original brown wash for a little different look. Your colors can be anything you like. Then I took a small brush and, using the darker wash, added some random stripes down the stems. On the body, I added some muscly detail. Add some additional detail all over his body as you see fit. I mixed some orange and yellow and some water to make a wash for highlight details. You can dab off extra color, so the highlights are more subtle. I 
After the paint dries, it's time to add some of the fun details. I cut off some of the plastic grapes and used my paintbrush to poke holes into the top stems. I inserted the grapes and used super glue to secure them. I didn't paint the grapes because I love their original color. You will probably want several groups of grapes among the top stems. I punched some holes into his forehead and inserted a few of the smaller artificial leaves. These were super glued into place. The big leaves go in the tops of the stems. Poke a hole into the top of the stem. Add some glue to a leaf and push it down as far as you can. Now let's add some of our real roots to his fingers and arms to complete him. I cut off a few of the best small roots to use for this. Just poke some holes into his fingers and arms and super glue the roots into place. Now your baby mandrake is complete and a new member of your family. Take care of him, and don't forget to wear earplugs while handling.